Good morning. Quick and dirty vote a video for the benefit of the soldier of the Seaforth for whom I have done a substantial alteration on his kilt. Best practice, he would come to me, I would explain everything to do, show him how to fit it properly now that his kilt has changed. He can't make it in, thus this video. So I've repaired the front apron of your kilt. There had been a tear here. I reinforced the existing repair. There are some moth holes which I captured the edges with silk, silk thread overcast. I've added a very heavy bar tack reinforcement. I was able, initially this kilt had just the old two buckles on the right side. I've added a buttonhole and a, and a strap to hold the inside apron. More on that in a minute. Um, no change for the inner apron. Inside, from the feeble, tiny little canvas, I've added a five inch wide piece of canvas which is continuous from the buckle to the strap because that's the whole point of the operation. I haven't changed your um, elastics because I don't see at any point you're going to Maxwell to Highland Games, you're going to be beating the stuffing out of this kilt. Why do something I'm going to have to repair afterwards. New lining is cotton flannel. It wicks better than the synthetics or silk and it holds your shirt in place. I find that smooth linings, your shirt tends to flow out the top. Now when you put the thing on, I've reduced it in height, in length I should say, from three inches from the top. One does not shorten kilts from the bottom. That If it's got a hem, it's a skirt, you're a girl. So I've reduced it three inches from the top. I've added the strap and buckle. Now when you put the kilt on, comes up to your ribs, it had been higher before, the top of the kilt comes up to your short ribs, you put the strap through the, but the buttonhole, this sounds stupidly obvious but you'll see why in a minute, here's a mistake everybody makes, they get the strap through the buttonhole, they yank, now I construct this overlap seam more heavily than anybody else in the trade, but even so this will fail if you do that, we put the strap through the buckle, then you suck in your guts as hard as you ever can, and then you draw it tight. And then having done that, that that's going to last a good while longer. Having done that, you then do the outside only tight enough to make it firm and not singing tight so that the lines start to weave in the front. Um, having taken the kilt off, having worn it any length of time at all, particularly as you're going to be in the hot summer heat of uh, southern Ontario, you take your kilt off, you lay it out like this, neatly, and you let it completely wick off. You let it completely evaporate before you put the kilt away. Proper way to put the kilt away, I don't add straps to the things because I don't want you hanging in the kilt. The best, absolutely the best way to put a kilt away, you pick it up, inside lining, or sorry, lining facing you, inside apron facing you, starting from the left. If you can see my label, you know I'm in the right spot. Using your chest as a table, you roll the kilt up backwards. It doesn't have to be tight, but we're keeping the top, end e the top edge even. Having done that, the pleats will hold nicely, because if, if you hang a kilt, or if you put it in a pants press, the, kilts, the pleats go all over the place. So rolling it up backwards like this, the pleats are going to stay nice and neat, and this means that you can store it flat, possibly in a lady's stocking or something, or in a bag to prevent the moths from getting at it. You can even fold this in half, stuff it in your kit bag, travel across the country, get to the other end, it's going to be ready for parade. One last point, heavy duty straps, much heavier than you had before. Now again, this was a one-off for the individual to whom I'm addressing this, but I'm sure other people will find this useful too. Thank you, and good day.